I'm out here on the trail today talking about the brand new Ultra Lone Peak 8. This has been a really big year of innovations for Ultra, so stay tuned to find out what they did to the Lone Peak 8. Just a quick disclaimer, these are our own thoughts and views on these. Ultra didn't give us these shoes. They're certainly not paying us for these shoes. They have nothing to do with any final say on those. This is just our thoughts on these models. Let's first get into some of the nitty gritty details on the new Lone Peak 8. On the men's side, this shoe is coming in at 10.7 ounces, and on the women's, it's 9.1 ounces. This has a 25 millimeter stack height to it, and this is still a zero drop shoe from Ultra. This features a stone guard, so if you're running somewhere that has a little bit more jagged rocks to it, it should protect your foot a little bit better. It features a brand new upper made of a ripstop mesh. It features a gusseted tongue, a padded heel collar, a reinforced toe cap, and a little bit of stability. So there's a lot of great things to be excited about with the Lone Peak 8. For us, this is our most popular ultra shoe, specific, definitely on the trail. And I would say like on the road, kind of depending on the month, this is always at worst our number two most popular ultra shoe that we carry. If you're a trail aficionado, you've probably slipped on a Lone Peak at some point, or at least run in a group run with somebody wearing a Lone Peak. This has been such a popular model for ultra over the years. And honestly for us, not only has it been a great shoe for people that run on the trail, but because of its stack height and profile, this is just a great everyday casual shoe for somebody who's looking for like a hybrid shoe. But specifically for the trail, the things that we're really excited about on the Lone Peak 8 are just first the comfort and fit. If you've been a Lone Peak person or an Ultra person for years, you know they have some variance when it comes to the width of the shoe. Thankfully, the Lone Peak 8 is still coming in at an original foot-shaped toe box. So Ultra has a variety of shoes with a variety of toe boxes to it, but this is, especially for the trail, the widest one they have. So the people that have been ride or die with the brand for a long time that miss that real big, comfortable wide shoe, this is gonna be your best option. And quite honestly, slipping on the Lone Peak 8, it really is like a, Ah, it's so comfortable. And walking around in this shoe, I think what surprises me and surprises so many people when they try on a shoe like this size is how much cushion they bang into this shoe. This has Ultra's Ego Midsole, which is very popular in most of their premier lines. It's like a really energetic, soft, plush midsole. But like when you pick this shoe up against other shoes in the Ultra family that feature different variations of an Ego Midsole, it's so surprising how much this one has. Like you, you, you really, you put it on and you feel like you have, there must be some sort of nice additional insole in this shoe to make it feel so plush, but it's not. And I think that's one of the reasons why people find this shoe to be such a great shoe for not just running or hiking, but for just everyday walking around. One of the things this shoe doesn't have is a Vibram outsole. They've stuck to this max track outsole to it, which I know reading in comments from previous iterations from the Lone Peaks that some people wish that they upgraded this to like a Vibram or just something a little bit different, but they've stuck with this. And quite, quite honestly, I've had people that do a little bit of everything in Lone Peaks, and I've never really had a ton of people that say, I fell, I slipped, I wish I had a different outsole to it. I think it's really easy to point to it and say, well, most of the big heavy hitters on the trail line have a more premium outsole to it. But I think that this is just fine for most people, and I do a ton of trail running, and I have really, in, in pretty much all conditions, have had pretty good success with this, going through snow and through muckety muck and mud and rain, all that crap. I've had pretty good success with this and never really had a situation where I've bit it and been like, I wish I had a different outsole on this shoe. So I think sticking to the Max Track really is not the end of the world for some people. Um, I think one of the nice things that they've done with this shoe is kept the price point the same. And I know we've seen a lot of shoes that are jumping up, but a shoe that is so versatile that you can wear for like long stuff to short stuff, staying at $140 makes this a much more easily accessible shoe for a lot of people. And the fact that they've kept this mask Max Track, quite honestly, I'm gonna put this in a category of shoes that I've used before. This is a perfect vacation shoe. And I, and I know it's one of those really stupid things to say, but I have certain shoes and people come into the shop and they tell me I'm going on a trip and I'm looking for a great shoe. I point them to this shoe quite frequently. Because of the Max Track outsole, it's not so aggressive if you're walking on the ground. And honestly, when we're doing a lot of shoe tests, I might wear a variety of shoes on one foot, one on the other foot. And when you're walking around on the road in a Vibram, like you can spot somebody a while away. Like you can kind of hear it. This is giving you some nice protection, but you can wear it around and not feel so obnoxious when you're doing it. It gives you comfort because of the midsole that you can wear it all day, even if you're not on the trail. 
it's not so bulky. It is a low profile shoe. It is something you can throw on with a pair of jeans and feel comfortable. It's also got enough grit to it that if you were doing a 50K, you'd be totally comfortable in this. We're near the JFK 50 miler. That's a popular race around the East Coast. I have a ton of customers that do that race. I have a lot of people that race in the Lone Peak. Even though this is sort of classified as a mid cushion shoe, there's so much bang for your buck in this midsole that a lot of people can get away for super long mileage in it. Of course, in the Ultra family, there's stuff that has a little bit more levels of cushion, but if you like that low profile zero drop shoe, the fact that this is just a 25 millimeter stack height shoe lets you have a little bit of ground contact while still feeling that plush bouncy midsole from the Ego midsole. Honestly, for what this shoe is, I think they did a great job on it. It's not crazy different from the Lone Peak 7. You know, I think some people are anxious to see some updates, but we've seen such updates from Ultra this year, including adding stuff with a drop, which a lot of people thought would never happen, that I honestly was pretty happy that there's not crazy differences between the 7 and the 8. It still has the same little stability to it. It still has the same reinforced toe cap. I do find this one, and it could just be me, when I slipped this on and I put it on against a 7, I felt this one ran just a, the smidgest bit wider, which I was quite happy about. I was, I was very happy to feel that. It just feels like home to me. They do have a wide option in this as well on men's and women's. So that's also another semi new thing for Ultra. They have now, we have about three models that are coming in wide, including the wide peak, the wide lone peak. I will say I haven't got a chance to put the new wide lone peak on my foot yet. And I was curious to, so make sure you stick around because we're going to do a follow up video in a couple months after we get a couple hundred miles on these to see how it feels. But I'm really curious to see if the lone peak wide fits a little bit better because we found it to be not quite wide where we wanted it to. So hopefully they dialed that fitting in a little bit more. And if you were somebody who ran in the wide Lone Peak before, I'd love to hear your feedbacks on it in the comments to just see if we we're the only ones that felt that the wide Lone Peak 7 was just a little off compared to what the 8 or the 7 felt like. So there you have it, the exciting new update on the Lone Peak 8. This guy is coming out at the end of 2023, and as I mentioned, still holding strong at $140, which really for the value and what this shoe is, I think that's a pretty good, a pretty good price point on it. If you have questions on the Lone Peak 7 or 8, feel free to leave it down below and we'll try to get back to you as soon as we can. If you'd like to purchase this fine product, click the link down below over to our website. And if you enter promo code RUNMORE, you'll save 10% on your order and we'll ship it out for free. Thanks so much for watching our channel. If you found this fun, exciting, and educational, do me a solid and like and subscribe. It certainly helps us out there find some new people. And if you're in the greater Westminster, Maryland area, stop on by the shop and say hello. Hey, and while you're at it, come out here to the beautiful trails of Hoshua. We got a great network out here of tons of miles of nice, soft terrain. Join us for a run. We'd love to have you. Thanks a lot. We'll see you around town.